think that because of the way culture is now with uh, with an absence of attention span, that maybe it's better to slowly release, even if you have the whole album recorded, to release it single by single or groups of three, maybe, because no one makes it through an album anymore, it seems. You do. <laughs> I do have a whole new collection of work that could be an album or it could be a series of singles, which... Uh, you know, I'm only part way into recording it and uh, I'm not in a rush. That's the thing that's changed in my life too. I'm, I'm not in a rush. And you know, when it's done, it's done. It's all good. I've got lots of work in China. Uh, so you might want to understand why I'm still in China. What you understand now why I, I went back there to pursue living in China. You missed the beginning. Um, it's okay. I was just saying that China, that's where I live in Beijing and when I arrived there, I felt like I'd been there before. So it seemed like a past life connection. So I stayed there. Um, then I, of course, you know, I have, I have children. I met and fell in love with my ex-husband who is Chinese. I met him there. And then we had two babies and then we split up. But then the split was a gift. It's a never say sorry when someone says they're divorced, say congratulations, really. Or say, how are you? And then the person can say, I'm awesome. And then, then you can say, congratulations. That might be the best way to just double check because they might still be in, in, in grief stage, right? Which I never went through. I was always jumping for joy when, that, when the divorce happened because we weren't meant to be, but the kids were meant to be. So I, I am so thrilled that through him, I managed to have two beautiful children and they are doing wonderfully well. They're here in Canada with me to see their grandparents for the first time in four years because the pandemic kept us in China. We were unable to leave the country for a long time. Um, and then the thing is, is that China brought me a whole new array of opportunities as a musician that I had never considered before. So I was a touring musician in the independent scene here. Uh, and that leads you to live shows. It leads you to a, a bit of licensing sometimes. Um, sometimes you can do some studio work if you're uh, like if if you offer that as a studio musician or a backing singer. But I, I didn't find a lot of array when it came to like a wide array of options when I was here. It was road work or nothing in terms of making a living at this. And. Uh, when I went there, suddenly there, was, there were so many more options for me as a musician and as a singer and as a performer and as a, as a foreigner there. Um, so let me give you an idea of the things that I do that are connected to my music career. So of course I play live a lot. Um, I have uh, two to three steady gigs a week. And then I tour around Asia as well. So in the month of June, for instance, I had six theater dates in different cities all throughout China, which was amazing. Those theaters were gorgeous. And I had waited for the pandemic to be over for those to finally get rebooked because they were booked pre-pandemic and then everything fell apart. So that's partly why I also wasn't in a rush to run away yeah. during the pandemic. Like, no, but the theaters. Um, <laughs> and they finally happened in June. And then I was still playing twice a week. So I, was, so I had eight performances. And then I had a couple of special events. I had a Can Canadian embassy show. I had a Swiss embassy show because I know we're, we're just almost like, they're almost like Canadians. Yeah. Yeah. They, and, uh, I had a couple of other special events. So that's eight bar gigs and four events. That's 12. And then I had six theaters and that was amazing. Like financially it was a great month. And, uh, I was on stage, which is what I love. I love to be on stage. I love to perform with people, or to people and with people too. My band was great. Tell your friends. Tell your friends about Hooks and Ladders, but also about songstudio.ca. You can get all kinds of information about songwriting, tips and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, like, follow and subscribe. That's what we need, that's what you need. <laughs> you and I talked about this earlier, mm -hmm. and I won't ask you to get into, into the nitty gritties. Into the nitty gritties in the, in the details, but you're finding that you can get paid far better. Oh yeah, the rates are better China. there for musicians. Like, like at this point, after 15 years there, of course I'm in the, in the inner circle of musicians. You can't just fly over to Beijing and suddenly get these gigs. You can't, it doesn't work that way. Plus I speak the language. I speak the language fluently thanks to my annoying ex-husband and thanks to <laughs> years of language training. Um, 
So that's key. I can communicate with all the presenters. I can communicate with the audience. I can build a rapport. I, I have built my career over there in the last 15 years. So just keep that in mind. Being in the inner circle, you're still working in bars, so bars don't pay that well. But everybody in, everybody in the band is paid equally in a bar setting, and the standard rate is 800 RMB per person, which equates about $150 per person Canadian for a gig in your local town. So if you're doing two or three of those a week, that's really nice pocket money, right? It's not so bad. But then the, the theater shows or the events are much more. You can charge much more for those. And uh, it's more than a living wage. And here, if you're playing in bars and you're playing a weekly show in bars, you'd be lucky to make $50 a person. So I'm making three times what people make. And to me, that's uh, already what it should be. Like, we shouldn't be making $50. We're st we were making $50 in 1998. Yeah. A player. It's a should. What is wrong with this industry that it hasn't increased with inflation? By the way, I went to the supermarket this week, and I've have been away for four years. It cost nine bucks for a big thing of yogurt. Like, what's <laughs> going on? What's happening? So I think that we're being more fairly paid in bar settings. And then the other side of that is if you do an event or if you do a touring show. It is standard policy in Asia for the presenter in the town to pay for all your travel expenses. So all of that is covered. That's standard. It's now to the point where I feel that's the way it should be. So I come back here a bit entitled, like, what? Oh, <laughs> I have to buy flights for everyone? <laughs> I forget that that's how it works here. That you have to kind of balance the budget and think about, oh, how much... If I get if I get two thousand dollars to play this festival, which is kind of a standard fee, or twenty five hundred or something, how much am I going to make at the end of the day mm -hmm. when I have to get my band there and I have to pay for food costs on the way or whatever? So I had forgotten that. I of course ran ran my music label under the Canadian policies or methods for you know because you've had your own label years. since the beginning yeah i started a label in 1997 and uh then i actually split the label into two companies one is a touring company that's just registered as a business and one is a corporation which is the label um so i have two businesses here and then in 2020 i started a chinese-based version of my label which was the smartest thing for me to do in terms of paperwork and taxes in china as a foreigner so now i am a business owner in asia as well and though, uh, you know, I've been, I, so I'm on the, on the backside of my performance career, I'm also a business owner, right? So I have to think it as a business person.